Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we'll see how to set up dynamic lighting in Roll20. Specifically, we'll talk through the lighting settings available to you on pages, we'll talk about setting up light sources and walls, we'll talk about giving your tokens the ability to see in the dark, and we'll see how to set up obstructions that block light. And one thing to know is you will need a paid account in order to use this feature. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Dynamic lighting really adds to the immersion of your game. By limiting what your players can see, it ratchets up the tension and the drama. What's lurking around the corner? Is there something else in the room with us? It's much more fun when your players get surprised by what's in the dungeon, rather than being able to see every monster in every room long before they get there. So, let's see how to set that up. So here I am on a fresh map that I've just imported into my game. I generated this using Dungeon Channel. I'll pop a link to that site down in the description. I've done a video on them before. I'll put a card up in the top for that as well. But this rendered a nice little map for me, and now I want to add dynamic lighting to this map. Now to help me illustrate the changes that I make as we go through this, I'm going to bring up my player's view. So this is exactly what my players are seeing as I make changes to this map. Okay, so let's start out here. We're going to go up to the page toolbar. And the first thing we need to do is turn on dynamic lighting for the map. And to do that, we're just going to say page settings. We'll go over to dynamic lighting. And I'm just going to say dynamic lighting on. Save that and close the toolbar. And you'll notice now my player's view went completely black. That's because the token on this map does not have the ability to see right now. So we need to give the token that ability. So we're going to double click on the token here. And we're going to say token vision on. And we'll save that. And now, as you can see over in the player view, the token can see themselves. Um, as you're going along as the DM, if you ever want to get a kind of sneak peek of what the player can see, you can just highlight their token and press Control L, and that will effectively let you see through the player's eyes. But one thing to know about that shortcut is you as the DM will still be able to see things that are on the GM layer when you use this shortcut. So we've given the token the ability to see, but it can't actually see anything yet because there are no light sources on this map, the token doesn't have night vision or anything like that. So let's set up a light source now so that the token will be able to see. The first thing we're going to do is go up to the dynamic lighting layer. So I'm going to go up to the toolbar here and I'm going to hide my player view for a moment. And we're going to click on the dynamic lighting layer. Okay, so we're on dynamic lighting. And now what we're going to do is add a token to the dynamic lighting layer, and that token will serve as our light source. So to get the token, I'm just going to roll a D12 real quick here, and I'm going to drag that token onto the dynamic lighting layer, and we'll put it right next to our player here. And I'm going to double click on the token to bring up its settings here. And what I'm going to say is that the token emits bright light and we'll say it emits bright light out to a distance of 15 feet. So it will give me illumination that distance. And then I also want the token to give off a little bit of low light as well. So you'll have kind of a dimmer effect the further away from the light source that you go. So I'm going to turn that on and I'll give it an extra, say, 10 feet of dim light. And that's it. We're just going to save the settings now. Okay, and as you can see, we've got the light source on the dynamic lighting layer, and in our player view, the screen is lit up a bit. And you can see that there is a brighter area the closer you are to the light source, and then at the very edges of the light source, it's dimmer. So that's exactly the effect that I'm going for here. Something else to point out is that because the token is on the dynamic lighting layer, the players can't see the token itself, but they can see the light that's being emitted from it. Also, you as the GM, when you leave the dynamic lighting layer, you don't see it either. And to leave the dynamic lighting layer quickly and go back to the token layer, I just pressed O on the keyboard. I've got enable advanced shortcuts set in my game, and that lets me move between the different layers uh, with just a keystroke. So pressing O takes you to the objects layer, pressing the comma key brings you back to the dynamic lighting layer. And so I'll be toggling between the two of those 
as we go through the rest of this video, and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts for that. So we see now that we have our light source set up, but as you notice, it's not exactly perfect because in the player view there, we can see through the walls. We can see down here that there's the text from where this map was generated from, and that doesn't really look great. So what I want to do right now is just set up some walls to limit what the players can actually see. So what I'm going to do is press the comma key to go onto the dynamic lighting layer. And now that I'm on the dynamic lighting layer, what I want to do is actually draw my walls in. So I'm going to go up to the toolbar here, and I'm going to go to the drawing tool. I'm going to hide my player view there. I'm going to say that I want to draw a polygon line. And with that selected, I'm going to come to the color box here, and I want the wall color that I draw with to be a different color than what the rest of the map is, because I want this to stand out to be easier to see. So I'm just going to use this blue right here. So I'll select that. Okay. And let's bring the player view back. Okay. And now all I'm going to do is just draw lines on the map. So I'm going to click right here at this corner. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key. And that's going to snap the lines to the grid. And that way my, my lines are just going to be a lot more uh, level. So I'm going to draw around here. And we're going to complete this sequence like so. And then when you're done drawing, what you do is you right click and that ends the line. And you notice now in the player view, we just clipped off the part down here where you could read the text of where the map was from. So what I'm going to do now is just repeat that process for the rest of the walls in the dungeon. Okay, so I've fast forwarded time a little bit and I finished that. Now what I want to do is put a door leading out of this chamber. So what I'm going to do is go back up to the drawing toolbar here, and I'm going to put a different color for my door. Let's use this orange here so it stands out from the walls. And I'm also going to make the line thickness extra large. And then we're just going to come down here, and I'm going to draw my door going from here to here. Okay, now I've got a really nice big door there, and I'll right-click to end my line. And you can see in the player view that the door is now blocking the player's view. When it's time for you to actually open the door, all you need to do is make sure you've got the select tool picked here, and then you can just grab the door and move it out of the way. I usually like to drag the doors kind of up into a little dead space outside of the room itself. And you can see now in the player view that that just opened up the door into the hallway. Now, one of the other features that dynamic lighting gives you access to is night vision for your tokens. So if you're playing D&D &D and you have characters who have dark vision, or if you're playing a sci-fi game and your characters have night vision devices, you can do those sorts of things via dynamic lighting as well. So I'm going to jump back to the token layer here. Just press O on the keyboard. And I'm going to double click my token. And then I'm going to go over to the dynamic lighting tab here. Vision's already on. We did that earlier. Now we're going to turn on night vision. And this is what's going to let our characters see in the dark. We can also set how far they can see in the dark. And typically that's going to be 60 feet for elves and dwarves. But if you have, say, a deep gnome character who can see out to 120 feet, you could change that here. Or if you've got a Twilight Domain cleric who can see out like 300 feet, you can do that as well. Uh, right here you can set a tint color, so how the vision will be tinted. So will they see with like a red haze for their night vision or infravision uh, or maybe a green haze if you've got a night vision device? I kind of like this red, so I'm going to go with that. And then you can also set night vision effects. Uh, this would let you see sort of like a dimming effect out there. Personally, I'm just going to keep this as none. We're going to click Save Settings here, and you'll notice now that opens up in the player view a much further field of view. We've got this area in the room where I defined a light source that's still lit up with regular white light, but then we get into night vision the farther out down the corridor that we go. So I switched to a full screen of my player view here, and you can see now that we can move down the hallway, and it's a much more pronounced effect from the night vision that you see over here on the left to the white light down here on the right. So the further away from the white light we go, the more that that disappears, and we're left with just our night vision as we progress into this next chamber. 
Okay, so we're back in the DM view here, and let's give this new chamber that the player's about to go into a little bit more character. Let's say I want to have some columns holding up the ceiling here. Well, we can put those in. And what I'm going to do is, again, press the comma button to go back to the dynamic lighting layer. I'm going to go back to my drawing tool, and this time around I'm going to say draw shape. And you'll notice in the tooltip there it says draw a rectangle, or you can hold Alt for a circle or ellipse. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select draw shape. I'm going to use the blue color again. We're going to go with just regular line width. And I'm going to press Alt to draw a circle to represent the column. I'm going to put the column right here. So I'm just going to draw my circle in. And now when I let go, you see now we've got this shadow being cast in the DM's eyes. And then over there on the right in the player's view, their vision is now blocked. So if I go back to the token layer here, and I'm just going to, as the DM, I'm going to move the token up, we'll see it move for the player as well. And we can see now that that shadow is rotating around as we move, and that gives a really nice column effect. So now we could have a monster hiding behind the column, and the player's not going to be able to see it until they get further into the room. Now, this is a good time to bring up some of the other lighting settings that are available to you on the page. So I'm going to open up the page toolbar again. I'm going to go back to my demo page here. And I'm going to go on to dynamic lighting. I'm just going to scoot this guy over for a minute. All right. And what I'm going to do now is turn on daylight mode. Daylight mode is going to put full light on all areas of the map. So let's go ahead. Let's do that. I'm going to say daylight mode on and save settings. And now you see that the player's view has lit up completely with regular white light as if it were daylight. But the great thing about this is it preserves any other settings that you have on the dynamic lighting layer. So you notice we're not seeing through walls like we were before. That column is still being displayed with the shadow there. So daylight mode lets you set up all those same kind of shadows and doors and walls. It's just there's no need to set up separate light sources on your map because the entire map will be illuminated. Okay, I'm just going to turn that setting off now. Again, we're just going to flip that switch, save settings. Okay, now I'm going to jump back to my player's view for a moment. All right, so here we are as my player again. And I, as you can see, I've got night vision on. And I want to show you something. I'm going to grab my player's token, and I'm just going to drag it around. And you'll notice as I drag around, I can actually, like, explore the whole dungeon like this. And I, I'm just dragging my token around. That lets me see everything. I don't necessarily want my players to be able to do that. You know, Sir Holiness McRighteous here only has a move of 30 feet. I don't want him to be able to run all around the dungeon while somebody else is taking their turn and let him find everything. So what I'm going to do is jump back to my DM view. I'm going to go back to my page settings, and I'm going to turn on this update when token drop setting. And we'll save that, close it, and then let's switch back to our player's view. And now... When my player drags, you'll notice their night vision doesn't update. So they can't see what's around the corner until they actually drop their token there. That's what update when drop means. So once I get moved to that spot, the angle of the column changed. We can see what's behind it now. If I was able to move down here, then I could see down the hallway after I'd moved into it. So your players can't run around and explore the entire dungeon by dragging their token when you have update when drop turned on. All right, but let's just move back into the chamber here because there's one more setting I want to talk about. And that last setting is called Explorer Mode. So let's go back to the page toolbar here and we'll go to our page settings, dynamic lighting, and we're going to turn on Explorer Mode. And what Explorer Mode is going to do is let the players basically see where they've been. So if I bring back my player view here and I start moving the token, okay, you'll notice now in the right corner there, there's that gray space where the player can't see anymore, but they know where they've been. So if I continue moving down, you see more stuff that's turned gray. If we move around the corner here, the player no longer has line of sight to any of this stuff up top, but they have a 
sort of visual record that they've been there. So this is kind of nice for when you're doing a big dungeon crawl, your players can see where they've been, kind of have a feel for where left on the map they may want to go. Or if you're doing more like a haunted house scenario for, say, Call of Cthulhu, and you don't want your players to remember where they've been, then leave this setting off, and then they're just in this little pocket of light, and they have no way of remembering where they've been unless you've actually got somebody who's manually mapping this out on a sheet of paper. So that's what Explorer Mode will do for you, and that's a really cool effect, I think, if you are doing a, a big dungeon crawl, just to kind of let your players remember exactly where they've been. So there you have it, that's how you set up dynamic lighting in Roll20. As you can see, it does require a little bit of upfront work, but it's worth it in the end because you get a much more immersive game. Now, for those of you who don't want to go in and draw every wall and door, many of the modules on the Roll20 Marketplace come with dynamic lighting already set up, so you can just drop those into your game and be good to go. Also, the Dungeon Generator site that I mentioned earlier has an option where it will generate the walls for you if you subscribe to their Patreon. So, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.